Hello, my name is Reshma and I'm going to go through an example of submitting a pull request or a PR. I participated in my first Scikit-Learn sprint about a year and a half ago and um, I'm happy to share an example. Um, once you learn, this example is going to be for the SK Learn repo, but once you learn how to do it for this repository, you can do it for any repository on GitHub. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I have my um, I have some things set up and the first thing is I'm working out of my home directory is I just want to make sure and see which which Python I am using. Is it the system? Is it Anaconda? I am using uh, the Anaconda version which is good. I also want to just confirm what version of Python I'm using and it's version 368 and I just want to check one more thing which is do I have git installed and I do. That's great. So. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my work environment, my virtual environment, and to do that I'm going to use conda create minus n for name, and the name of my virtual environment is going to be sklearn-dev, and I'm going to install the following packages in this environment. It's going to be numpy, scipy, matplotlib, pytest, Thanks, Scython, and IPy kernel. Okay, so this is going to take just a little bit of time as it creates the environment. It's going to ask me if I want to proceed. I can hit enter or type yes, enter. So the environment has been created and it tells us right here to activate this environment use this command conda activate sklearn dev or conda deactivate. Also if you want to see a list of your work virtual environments I just type conda environment list. And for me I have two uh, virtual environments. I have my dash environment for another project I'm doing in SK Learn Dev, and I want to go into that one. So I'm going to do conda activate SK Learn Dev. And I want to um, do additional installations within this virtual environment. And to do that, I'm going to do conda install minus C conda forge. And it's going to be sphinx dash gallery. There we go. And type yes, enter. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my repository, and so I'm going to go over to uh, Scikit-Learn, and this is the main repository, and so I'm going to fork it so I get a copy within my own account, and I'm going to fork it under my GitHub there. It just takes a little bit of time. All right, there we go. So right here it has my forked repo and over here it has um, okay over here which is the main repo the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clone it right here um, I have my SSH key set up so I'm going to use this if you don't you want to use this URL so I'm going to use SSH I'm going to copy and then I'm going to go back to my terminal I'm going to just clear it and go to the top and I'm going to type git clone and I'm going to clone this version. Okay. 
Okay, so then I'm going to type ls, and that just lists what I have um, in this folder, and it shows scikit-learn right here, and I'm going to cd into it, cd scikit-learn, okay. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to build from source. I'm going to do pip install minus e space dot. All right, so that took a little bit of time, but it looks like it's done. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to check my remotes for Git. So I have uh, origin, I have mine, and I want to add my upstream. And so to do that, I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to open this in another window. I'm going to get the URL for it. And the way to do it is I do git remote add upstream, and I add this URL to it. Okay, and then when I check my remotes, looks like I have um, the origin and I have the upstream, which is good. That's where I want to be. Okay. So I just cloned the repo and it's up to date, but say you're going back to your work. If I want to um, get the latest um, changes to scikit-learn, I, scikit I do git pull upstream master. So I'm pulling from this remote upstream and it's the master branch. Okay, and it tells me it's already up to date, which I expect because I just cloned the repo. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an issue that I have already picked out that I'm going to work on. And what it's going to be is this issue, which is 15761. And it says that the documentation of default values in many classes is either not included or it's inconsistent. And so I'm going to reference this issue in my work. It's going to be 15761. And I'm going to go look at an example of, um, of one. So for instance, Here's, here's one where the default values are, are consistent. So it says default equals 2, default equals Euclidean, it's a string, default equals none. So this is the way, um, the consistent way that it should be. In an example that I found, for instance, in under the decomposition folder, underscore dict, underscore learning, I found one where it is not consistent, and here on line 75, it shows, I can make this a little bit bigger, it shows that it's mint and it goes 1,000 by default, right? And I just want to, I'm going to make a fix to this file, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my terminal here, okay? And what I can do is I can go to this issue that's opened, right? And I can make a comment on it. And I can say, I am working on dash sk learn dash decomposition slash underscore dict underscore learning dot py. Okay. So just people know that I'm working on this at the sprint to make sure that somebody else also isn't working on the same thing at the same time. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a feature branch. So I'm going to go over here and I am going to call my branch git check out minus b and I'm going to call it doc because I'm working on a documentation change and I'm going to call it dict learning. Okay. And it looks like I'm already 
I, because I created the branch this way, I'm in the branch right there. And I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code, my editor. Uh, you can use uh, any editor you wish, but I'm using, using Visual Studio Code. Okay, so I'm in the Scikit-Learn um, repository, my copy of it on my computer. And it is under decomposition, let's see, it's under SK Learn. It's under decomposition, and it is dict underscore learning. Okay, so here I am. And it was on line 75. Okay, and right there, notice how it says 1000 by default. And if I want to be consistent, I want to say default equals 1000 and I'm going to come here and I'm going to do that okay and so I'm going to save this file and then I'm going to go back to my hang on right there I'm gonna bring this over here I'm gonna go back over here and the next thing that I do is I'm going to commit my changes so I'm going to do git status, and ah, it tells me right here that I have modified this file right here. So I'm going to add it. I'm going to do git add sk learn decomposition underscore. There we go. Okay. It tells. So the next thing that I'm going to do after git add is I'm going to commit the file and it's git commit space minus n and the description is I'm going to say I'm going to say updated formatting um, for default value um, for consistency. Okay. All right, so the next step that I'm going to do before I push my changes is I am going to run some tests. So I am going to learn run the Flake 8 test for formatting. It's going to say Flake 8 SK Learn. And here I'm going to put the path to my file. So it's going to be decomposition and then underscore div learning. There we go. Ah, and it tells me that on line 75, I have this spot I have a trailing white space. So I'm going to go back to my, okay, when I do control E for the end, yep, I'm not, I have one extra space, which I shouldn't, so I'm gonna go back one. I'm going to save this file again, make sure my changes are saved. Then I'm gonna come back here, okay? When I do git status, it should show me that I've changed something, and it does, it tells me right here. So I'm gonna go through the process again. I'm gonna do git add sklearn decomposition and dsvt. I'm gonna do git commit, so I'm going to type in the same thing. Um, I'm going to say, update my commit, so I'm gonna say fixed flake eight error, error, there we go. Okay, so great, and I'm going to run the Flake 8 test again just to make sure. I just arrowed up to make sure. Now that I fixed that trailing space, it didn't show me any more errors, so that's a good thing. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run the PyTest sklearn test. Now, I made a documentation change, and I don't expect there to be any errors, but this is an example where it shows you... Um, I'm running the suite of PyTest um, sklearn just to see what the output looks like. So what this is doing is it's going through every test that's created and it's just making sure that none of the changes I made um, has an adverse impact on any of them.
All right, so it looks like one of the tests did not pass. Um, let's see which one it is up here. Um, I made a I made a documentation change, and occasionally some test doesn't pass, but it doesn't impact. Actually, it says over here that it's skipped. So let's see what happens. I had done a git add, a git commit. Now I'm going to do git push. So I'm going to do git push. Origin is to my remote and to my branch name, which is doc dick learning. Let's see what happens. So it has pushed to my branch. I'm going to go over to my my forked repo. I just refresh this page and it tells me that I have a pull request that I can compare and submit. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, and this is where I add a meaningful title. Okay, and so I'm going to call it um, DOC because it's a documentation fix. And I'm going to say cleaning parameter doc strings in decomposition slash dict underscore learning dot pi. Okay. And this is where I write um, some information. And so I'm going to say here that I am this PR references it references 157. Notice it's um, automatically linking to, there you go, fixed documentation. So I can, I can fill that in. I can delete this. Um, remember, I don't want to do closes here or anything like that. I'm going to put a description here that says that I um, updated the default value documentation for consistency. Um, okay. And if I do I have any other comments? Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to assume that I wor worked with the, my pair programming partner. Okay. So she also gets the notifications and I'm going to I'm going to assume that it's Miriam. And Miriam Dash K E, okay, M A R I A M. Actually, her name is that. Okay. Um, all right. And I just want to read this. It tells me it's a loose team of volunteers, so let's be patient about it. I have read it. They thank me for contributing. Great. And I have the information here. I can also preview over here. It tells me what it references, which one. Um, it um, tells me that. Um, and here I can, I click on allow edits by maintainers in case something needs to be changed. I can go through here and it tells me that this is exactly what I changed. I changed one line. And the line I changed was instead of a thousand by default, it's default equals a thousand. So it looks like everything is in order. I am going to create the pull request. Okay, and now notice I'm at the scikit-learn repo. And it is running some checks right here. This is in gold, so it means it's still processing uh, right there. Um, I'm going to go to this, the repo. I'm going to click on pull requests. And this is just a way to see what other pull requests other people have um, submitted. Notice that it's in green. It has the doc. It has the circle. I'm going to go back into it just to see um, what's happening. There's a bunch of checks here. Four in progress, two pending, two neutral, one successful. Um, sometimes, if you know, if the check fails, um, we can click on details here. This one has passed, so I'm just going to open this up in another tab just to see what's going on. And it gives some information. Ah, login with GitHub. I guess I could do that later.
and this can also take a bit of time and sometimes when we're in a sprint and a lot of people are submitting pull requests it takes a little bit longer also let's see what happens if I log in here I'm going to log into circle CI with github I'm going to authorize um, So these are interesting. All right, let me click on these details again and see what happens. This is what I want to. Ah, zero errors, zero warnings. Okay. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna just look at this one here. And it tells me that there's one test, one successful fail. And so this is actually a good way as these tests are being run. If they fail, you can click on these details and get more information about um, why they failed. So I am going to stop right here and then come back to it. So I am back. Um, I am checking to see my pull request. Um, it looks like all checks have passed, um, which is great. Um, just to let you know, the first time I did these PRs, I did not get so lucky. Um, but you know, if one of your tests uh, doesn't um, doesn't pass, you can open up the details and look for more, for more click through and look for more information about what's in there. Uh, sometimes you'll have a comment back from a reviewer. Um, I would say this took a good 20 or so minutes to run. So um, keep that in mind um, when you are when you are running, um, when you are submitting PRs. Um, and so that is an example of how to submit a PR um, with a simple, with a very simple fix. Um, and so um, I just want to go over um, the pull request. So what you want to do to get started is you want to make sure that you have your right environment set up. Um, Anaconda is always good to use. Uh, Python and Git are installed. You want to set up your virtual environment. You want to fork and clone and create a branch. You want to make an update to a file, starting off with a small fix in documentation and then gradually moving on to editing some code, running the test, and submitting a pull request. Um, you know, when you set up your virtual environment or somewhere along the way, you are most likely going to run into glitches. I certainly did. Um, and so and it depends on your setup and what operating system you're using and what versions of libraries you have and a lot of, a lot of dependencies. And so there's various ways to resolve these glitches. Um, if, you if you run into an error, you can Google it to see um, what information is out there. Uh, chances are other people have also run into that error. Um, if you're in a structured environment like this open source sprint, uh, you can troubleshoot with your pair programming partner. Everybody comes in with a different uh, background and experience. Um, and, you know, if you need assistance, we have, um, the, I mean, this is the reason we have the sprint is we have our help queue on the Discord and you can uh, ask um, one, of the, one of the mentors at the sprint and somebody will help you. Um, so I just want to go over some common mistakes that I have made along the way. Um, you know, what the chances are you're going to leave this, you're, you're going to leave the sprint, and then the follow-up work is going to come later. And so as I, as I would go back to do work, um, I just want to make sure, you know, like, am I in my virtual environment? Sometimes I actually don't go into my virtual environment, and I run 
test and I run into all these errors and so that's always important. Um, I always make sure that I'm in the appropriate branch. That can be a cause of um, problems too. Um, make sure that I've synced my repo with SK Learn. If you go back and you know work on your PR three days, one week, two weeks later, uh, there are going to be updates that have been made to SK Learn, and you just want to make sure that you have the latest updates um, on your local um, computer. And you just want to make sure that you've run the test. Make sure that you've run the Flakegate test and the um, the Pi test as well. And uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I, um, I'm looking forward to looking at the PRs and answering any questions um, on Discord or on Gitter or, or um, wherever. Um, thanks for joining. Bye.